rolling action! Okay, so uh, welcome everybody again. I'm here with Christian, um, that's him. And we're going to talk about a little bit of a contentious issue within Christianity, whether your uh, salvation can be lost to you. Uh, whether you can voluntarily like walk away or by some action, whether you can um, rescind your salvation. So, what do you think? I mean, so yeah, I think that you've kind of looked at some of the sub questions in that as well. I know that in Christianity, there's a big conversation about can you lose your salvation, and if you just left it at that, I'd say no, you can't lose it. Yeah. Because it's not something that can be misplaced. There's an event that takes place when you're born again, you're dwelt with the Holy Spirit, and then you can't just lose it. But can you relinquish it? I'm, I'm in uh, the persuasion of thinking that you can. Excuse me, sir. Sorry, there's a camera right there. Thank you, darling. So you're of the opinion that it can be. I can give lost. it up if you want. I can act outside of. Oh, I, just I come can. From church is a good service. Excellent. Boy. Hallelujah. Uh, <laughs> Carry yeah. on. So, so I, I, I think I can actively choose, like if I took Shahada for example, I would then be outside. Of, if you blaspheme like, the yeah. spirit? Well yeah, yeah, if I intentionally in my heart would do that, you know, and, and live by that, then how can I then be one and join with God? Yeah. So I'm going to look for anybody, any Christians who are going, surely not Kay, no! Um, I'm going to quote some of the Bible here and then Christians got some of the Bible. So I'm going to go from the top actually. So in Galatians 5, and I'm reading from the WEB translation, um, the other translations that I know says severed, this says alienated, but we're going to get there. Stand firm therefore in the liberty or freedom by which Christ has made us free. And don't be entangled again with a yoke of bondage. So we're getting onto the law now. Behold, I, Paul, tell you that if you receive circumcision, Christ will profit you nothing. And just as an addendum, he's speaking to Gentile Christians. Yes, I testify again to every man who receives circumcision that he is a debtor to the whole law. You are alienated from Christ, you who desire to be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. So to me, that's pretty clear cut. What do you say? I mean, yeah, it's, obviously it's interesting, we've both kind of come from the same perspective, so it's, it's, a, it's a tricky one to kind of argue against. I don't want really. you to argue, I want no, you yeah. to affirm, no. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tricky one to argue against. If you're trying to nullify what Christ has done and the grace that is offered by turning to the works of the law yeah. to create salvation for yourself, then it's, it yeah. feels like it's quite obvious. It, it, it harks back to no man has, no man therefore is just by works of law so if you are not I can't believe Bob follows me into my mic range um, yeah so if you attempt to keep the law in in basically in my estimation you're throwing the sacrifice of Christ back in his face you're saying I've got this salvation I am now utterly atoned for forgiven washed clean and yeah I'm gonna try this backdoor hack to get to God and to, to please him when we know that it's filthy rags, our righteousness is as like filth basically to the Lord. So what verses do you have that may, um, that may back up our claim? Okay, so um, we are at the liberty of technology unfortunately and, ah. and here we go. No. <laughs> no. Okay, for we, I'm going to carry on. Galatians, no, there are more. Hebrews 6, 4 to 6. So for we, through the Spirit, by faith, wait for the hope of righteousness. We don't have it. We wait for the hope. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision amounts to anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith working through love. You were running well, who interfered with you that you should not obey the truth. This persuasion is not from him who calls you. So Paul is quite clearly saying to any Gentile Christians who are being swayed by arguments from uh, Jewish Christians, quite frankly, as to what they should eat and what they should, how they should uh, behave, um, he's saying quite clearly, faith is the justification. Right in my ear roll. Anywho, so did you find Galatians, uh, Hebrews by any chance? I didn't, but um, it does underpin, so Ephesians 2, 8 to 10, yes. uh, talks about how, you know, 
for it is by grace that you have been saved, through, through faith. Um, and it's not from yourselves, it is a gift, a gift of God, not by work, so that no one can boast. And circumcision is most definitely a work, as well as a like hygienic, I don't know, like sanitary it's arrangement. It's about the motivation, right? If yes. you're doing it for sanitary, it's not like exactly. anyone who's circumcised, well, you're nullifying Christ. It's yeah. If you think that this is going to be the thing that uh, removes the gulf between you and God, you're wrong. It's, it's only by grace through faith in Christ. And therefore repent. No, sorry. <laughs> Did you hear me? But that repent, that's an interesting one as well, because it's metanoia, right? It's yes. the change of mind. It's not just listing out the things that you're sorry for. It's like about... a Catholic confession, you say. It's yeah, not well. like that. Okay. <laughs> interesting. It's turning away from your sin and turning towards God. Right? So it, Absolutely. It's, 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 it's a psychic that mind. change of heart kind of yeah. thing. But it's also changing your mind away from uh, the works onto the grace. It's the, you know, you're accepting Christ has done everything for you, right? Yeah, so you're, it's, I mean, I mean, go and sin no more is a, bit, is a bit much, really, when Paul speaks about doing the things he doesn't want to do, not doing yeah. the things he wants to do. He therefore concludes that uh, it's the sin in him that is acting and, uh, you know, like... Um, urging him onwards, the lusts of the flesh against the uh, the spirit. But again, so with Ephesians 2, 8 to 10, um, it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And so that's, that's an all-encompassing sola fide and sola gratia statement. However, also the preceding verses 1 to 7 are pretty interesting in terms of the solas, but also the implication is when taken with Hebrews, which you'll have to look up yourself or I'll get in a minute, uh, 6, 4 to 6, or Galatians, my phone's ringing, or Galatians 5, 4 means that to go against this faith, to, in, to engraft into this faith some works is, is not acceptable and you will be severed from Christ if you read certain translations or alienated. And it's the part about you have fallen from grace. So that's a definite article, as it were. There's no, like, wiggle room for, well, I'm just a bit alienated, but we'll get back in touch soon. Because there are other verses, very sadly, and I'm working on an answer to it, that says you cannot again bring yourself to repentance. My thing is now going to be, I guess, it doesn't say the Holy Spirit can't bring you to repentance. It means that you of yourself cannot bring yourself again to this repentance. Once you have tasted the Holy Spirit, that's the verse you're getting up, I believe. It is. I would rather it in uh, not that. Yeah, WAB is the translation that I use often because it says Yahweh and I like that. Oh. Uh, you're okay with ESV? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Go for it. Okay, so for it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance since they, have, since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up to contempt. Yeah. I would say, I mean, that's a bit of a, a harder argument for me, as in, so still the Holy Spirit isn't, isn't specifically referenced as one who will not or cannot bring that person to repentance, but it's pretty strong language, and it shows that it's talking about Christians, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, those who have tasted uh, the heavenly goodness um, of the age to come, i.e. the coming of the Son of Man, I guess, like the, those who have seen Christ in their uh, own lives and indwelt by the Holy Spirit and then have fallen away. So that, that's a really important bit though, right? That falling away. What have they, have they, have they, they can't stop, oh, I don't know, drinking or eating something. Are they just normal sins that they're fall, like falling into? I don't think so. No, I don't think, I think so either. falling into the works of the law, right? Yes, and Satan basically has yeah. taken hold again. Yeah. Because, yeah, because once you have fallen away, the common language, even though it's in the koine, the falling away is the same falling away from grace. It's not stumbling, it's not backsliding, as it were. It's full-on alienation, yeah, or grace, severance. Right? So, so yeah, I think, actually, we may have, I don't know, like, have you got any I advice for anyone? I feel like solved, right? <laughs> Listen. I feel like there's a, another reformation on its Big way. up, Lufa. <laughs> Always, always in my uh, It would be heart. interesting, though. I know that you get a lot of uh, people watching these. If anyone's got any kind of good 
rebuttal. Solid, yeah, like it would be nice to go. Not of, from any Catholic liturgy or any like extra scripturals. Biblical. I know there are cases. I know there are um, some verses. The Holy Spirit is not bringing them to my mind. I wonder why. Um, I know there are. I've heard some use. Oh, oh. Um, for he will finish the good works that he has started in you. That's one no that's one used to out of my hand. So ah, that's. I know the good plans I've got for you. Excellent point. In that's Old Testament. But yes. So the bit about being snatched. No one can snatch you from the hands of the Father. That is still utterly correct whilst Galatians and Hebrews are still utterly relevant nobody can take you away you lead yourself out you jump off the cliff you go and get circumcised you so as Christian said it's not about potentially indulging in alcohol too much or lustful thoughts or gambling or it's not sin because we see from Paul the same writer that he sinned and he's open about it and he tells us to confess our sins to one another and to approach God you know, in repentance that God actually grants to us in the first place, which is handy. So the Holy Spirit convicts us of the sin. God grants us the repentance, the 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 change of mind. So we're not only sorry, we also are making efforts by the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, not on our own, to turn. Because if you've tried on your own, you'll know it's a fool's errand to turn away from that sin and to make yourself right with God through the only one who can make you right, Jesus Christ and his blood, which was shed. Guess who for? Yo. And it's brilliant. And it just, good. I like it. I can't, I can't, I can't tell a fib. I can. That was a fib. But I do. I know. But I've just literally changed of mind there. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, big up Jesus, obviously. Love him. Um, any closing words? How do you find it as someone who doesn't come very often, the uh, the lunacy? It's been quite sedate, maybe, because of the temperature. It's kind of, yeah, it's a lot calmer than than it's been when I've, than it has been uh, other times I've, I've come. But, um...